adopted a slightly different setup for this video. And when I say slightly, I mean completely different background. Of course, you'd never guess that this was filmed on the same day as the last video, because not only have I changed locations, but I've donned a vest. Today, I'm here to review Ali Smith's How To Be Both. So, as you may know from my previous videos, I'm making an attempt to read more female authors and also more authors of colour. So my hopes were high when the long list for the Man Booker Prize was announced. This year, the Man Booker Prize was open to American authors, so it's a much more international sort of gig. I thought, great, more recommendations. But no, I was very much disappointed. The long list only included three books by female authors. We are all completely beside ourselves. The Blazing World and How To Be Both. This is the third and last of those three books that I've read. And although I enjoyed the other ones, this one is my favourite. So you're asking, what is this book about? Well, it's kind of difficult to say exactly. Not in a we are all completely beside ourselves sort of way, because this isn't the kind of book that will be completely destroyed by spoilers, but I feel like it's best to go into it knowing as little as possible. What you maybe would like to know is that this has been published in quite an interesting way. There are two sections to this book. One is set in the 1400s and the other one is set in the present day. Depending on which copy you pick up, these two parts will be the opposite way around. My edition has the present day story first and I'd be really interested to chat with somebody who read it the other way around and to see what their perceptions of it were because they would change depending on which one you read. So also when you read this, the images on the front and also on the back will make a lot more sense. The protagonist of the present day story is called George and in the 1400s story it's an artist, the painter of the painting on the back, known as Francesco del Cossa. That's probably about all that I should say about this. It's not a plot heavy book but if you go into it with assumptions then it might change the way that you read this. I will talk a bit about the themes. The title is How to Be Both and this idea of both of duality, of being two things at once, is very, very prevalent in this. Both stories deal with gender in interesting ways. They're both about family relations and both protagonists are dealing with the loss of their mother. The ideas of love and friendship are tied up with gender as well and everything in this book will make you think. So if I had to put this into a category, I'd probably label it postmodern. Now, postmodernism is something that I've tended to avoid in my own personal reading. I've studied some works of postmodernism in university and haven't really loved them, haven't really clicked with this whole idea of fragmentation particularly. That Ali Smith just blows all that out of the water. She does fragmentation in such a crazy incredible way. The 1400s is from the artist's point of view, you get this kind of stream of consciousness and in the present day part it is third person but follows George's thoughts and memories. In both parts we switch from the present day narration of the character into their memories and back again and that's done in a seamless way. Adding to this you've also got just pages and pages of text without breaks. So you've got indentations for paragraphs but you haven't got breaks or chapters. So if you can sit down for a good few hours and just read this, it's a much easier experience. It's not the sort of book that's easy to dip in and out of. All of this adds to that postmodernist feel. This was the first Ali Smith that I read. I cannot wait to read more. I have heard that this is her best work to date, but if her other works are anything like it, then I'm gonna love them. All of this is probably making the whole story sound very, very complicated, but the writing itself is very simple and easy to understand. She doesn't use big and complex words and while her prose isn't exactly conventional it is accessible. If you do happen to pick up the 1400 story first you'll notice that the prose looks a bit like this at least to start with. Don't be put off by that it does start to make more sense the further you read. I would recommend this for everyone but I appreciate that some people might not enjoy it quite as much as I did. If you're an art lover you will probably adore this. If you're a feminist and as we know from Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie we should all be feminists then you should enjoy this too and if you like books that really make you think this will make you think. If you like linear plots and conventional prose then maybe give this one a miss. It might take a bit of getting used to when you first start reading it but persevere. I promise the whole thing pays off when you get to the end. So please let me know in the comments. Have you read this book? Did you enjoy it as much as I did? Has this encouraged you to go and pick it up? I'm curious to know. So once again, thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts. Until next time, bye!